Welcome back. The new input shaping for the MK4 Mark IV is a huge deal. I am disappointed that it did not come out for the XL first because that is the printer that came out first, but it is out for the MK4, so it's a step forward, and honestly, I am really excited about it. My last video, I printed the 12 minute Benchy, but of course, I want to see how that compares to other prints as well. So I downloaded the Prusa Slicer, which is the 2.6.0 Beta 3. I did have a little bit of trouble finding the download, as always. I went through the summary here, and I got a little impatient, and started scrolling, didn't see anything, and scrolled all the way to the bottom, because I thought, surely at the bottom of the page is the most important part, and didn't find what I wanted. So I scrolled back up. Took a little bit more time to look through this. I did read through everything and then finally realized the assets is what I needed to do that little drop down menu. That is the download for the new slicer for the beta. Got that downloading. I extracted the zip file and went to the configuration wizard. Here's where it gets super exciting. There is a separate profile for the input shaping for the Mark IV. The fact that it's a separate profile that I can jump back and forth is amazing. Then I can compare things very easily. I don't have to use this every time. So if I look at the Benchy at the regular Mark IV profile with the Benchy rules that I used in the race, slice this through, it's an hour six minutes for this print with the regular settings. Now I can easily compare things. I can swap to the input shaping profile, the new profile, and of course, I'm going to slice this one as well. This takes a little bit to go through. And it says that it's going to be 38 minutes to print this. This is not quite half, but almost half the time frame just to switch to the new input shaping. And of course, everybody's dying to know what's the difference in this profile. So I do just briefly run through these different settings so that you can see what's changed. Um, the overall layer is 0.2, that's the default for the input shaping. The speeds are overall, I, I guess I would say they're a little bit faster. The max print speed is at 200 millimeters per second. These numbers are great, but of course we want to know how we went from 38 minutes to a 12 minute Benchy. So this is the process where I pull the configuration for the bonkers Benchy into the input shaping profile. So we can go through and see exactly what they sped up, what did they change. I pulled the G code in and you can see that we are now at the 12 minute Benchy. So let's look a little bit closer so we can see exactly what happened. When I jump back to print settings, I see a ton of things highlighted. It seems like almost everything has changed. Layer height went from 0.2 to 0.28, and the first layer is 0.3. Top and bottom layers are quite a bit lower, and I'm surprised to see that we went back to the classic version of the perimeter generator. We went from the infill at 15% with grid to now we are at 10% with lightning. Understandable, that's not a huge change, but it, it will speed things up. I just start scrolling through here, anything that's red that looks like it's changed. I don't know why anything on the skirt or the brim would be changed because clearly we're not printing with a brim. We're also not printing with support material. I don't know why anything's changed on this category. Now when we go to speed, it does seem like these categories have been sped up overall a little bit on each category. When I scroll down though, I'm surprised that the max speed is still 200. So it's not like when I had previously just tried to speed up everything. They've gone through and really been meticulous in what they sped up. I'm surprised to see multiple extruder here. Makes me wonder if maybe they're trying to look into the XL as well. On advanced, it looks like a few things have been sped up as well. On 
on notes, I assume that this is just an internal thing as well as the dependencies category. I assume that's all just internal things. Let me know if you're interested in seeing the difference between the 38 minute and the 12 minute Benchy. I feel like the 12 minute Benchy was great. So let's just move on and see if these profiles work in the real world. My hubby sent me a print that's an add on for a tool he needs for work. He has a mini, so in comparison on this print that he sent me, the mini will take 3 hours 28 minutes to print this. It's not a very large print, and we do want to print it in PETG, so I want to see the comparison for other slicer settings with the MK4, with the Mark IV. When I switch to input shaping, it drops it to 1 hour 16 minutes. Let me just pause and take that in for a second. That is almost one third the time to print this on the Mark IV. And that is with the input shaping with no added changes like the Bonkers Benchy that sped things up so much. But of course, I already have the profile, so why don't I go ahead and pull that configuration in and see if this will speed it up even more if I do the Bonkers Benchy profile. And of course, I want to recenter it for the MK4. Okay, so we just dropped from 1 hour 16 minutes to 34 minutes. We originally were at over 3 hours for this print. So of course, I'm excited and I get this thing printing. I want to see exactly how well it does on something other than the Benchy. But I'm immediately disappointed. It's warping. You can see on the right, it's warping really bad. As it's printing on the left, it pushes it down, but it's warping on the left as well. This print is not going to work. So I reslice it with the regular input shaping profile. One hour and 16 minutes is still amazing, and I want to see how this is going to turn out. This print is a little under six and a half inches by two and a half inches, so it's a pretty decent size print. It's not baby. So to get something that can print with 0.2 layer height, in a little over an hour is crazy. This does have the two perimeter walls and 15% infill of the grid. So we really went back to the basics on this one and I'm hopeful we've gotten to this point, it's not warping, that this print is gonna work out. Okay, let's see how it looks. With PETG, I did use the textured sheet. It pops off very smoothly and it looks really good on the top. That clean edge, the bottom looks great, the sides. On the back, you can see a little bit from my finger on the PETG. I probably pulled it when it was a little too warm still. It printed great. It's exactly what we needed. It doesn't feel light or flimsy. I'm really impressed with this. I'm going to keep trying out other prints, but honestly, if things can be printed in almost one third the speed, this is a really big deal. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.